this episode of Rough Talk VR. We got another edition of Monday Morning News, jam packed last week. You know, jam packed. And we're gonna be remote next Monday due to some some personal obligation of yours. Yes, but that's an unskippable Monday Morning News next week too because next week's gonna kind of be the wrap up of Meta Connect, which is this week. So big stuff coming for sure. The jets are flying in. Yep. I mean, today's Monday. I believe Connect starts on what Wednesday. So things are going to be popping very fast this week. You know, there's been a lot of leaks, a lot of rumors, a lot of back and forth about pricing, exact specs of the Quest Three, and hopefully after this week, it's all confirmed. There's no more speculation. That's that's my hope. I'm also hoping I can press pre-order on whatever. Whatever it is, it'd be it. Yeah, it'd be nice if by the end of the week we're all able mm-hmm. to order them. Yeah, with a really, really, really soon shipping date. And this connect seems good. I mean, just on hype. You look at who some of the speakers are. You know, I saw the Scott Albright, the CEO of Ghost of Tabor. He was saying he's going to be a spe- waffle. Yeah, Combat yeah. Waffle Studios. They're he's going to be, be there. a great panelist, though. And then I've seen a plethora of developers posting, you know, hey, I'll be at Connect. And mm-hmm. so it's it's going to be a good show. There's going to be a lot of knowledge shared, I'm, I'm sure. So beyond just the keynote presentation, where that's where I expect to see most of the Quest 3 news, definitely you'll want to check out the other little side talks. They're bringing out some heat for the talks. It's going to be good. Yeah, I'm curious the... Curious the questions that'll be mm-hmm. thrown around, and more importantly, the answers. And I don't know; it's going to be an exciting, exciting, an exciting week for sure. Oh yeah, and it kicks off this week. But like I said last week, in the, the last couple of weeks, there's been leaks and rumors, and even rumors. this this past week, you know, there was a lot of uh, RAM talk. <laughs> People were kind of speculating, you know. So the Quest Two has six gigabytes of RAM, and the Quest Pro has twelve. So pretty significant difference between Quest 2 and Quest Pro. Be double. And a lot of people were thinking that the Quest 3 was going to have <laughs> going to have 12 as well. But, you know, then Elite came out, a little rumor saying it's going to have 8 gigs of RAM. And some people were, you know, the sky is falling, you know, everything burned down. But that's still a RAM increase from Quest 2. I can definitely see if you're a Quest Pro user, you're like, damn, I'm going down on RAM or whatever. But... That's unofficial as well. Oh, if you're a Quest 2 user? If Quest Pro. If you're a Quest yeah. Pro user, you're going down on RAM. Yeah. But right. if you're a Quest 2 user, you're still going up. Fucking going down on price, too. So <laughs> get that By out almost half. I, you know, yeah, yeah, I get it. So it's like, I mean. And it's all unconfirmed as of right now. Well, and I mean, I don't know how RAM is. Modern day RAM is. But back in the day when we was, was building the computers and stuff, you know, you do your home builds and stuff. It's like you could get really sizable RAM and it would be cheap, but somebody else could pay a lot more money for half that size RAM and it's going to perform so much better. Yeah, I don't so know. So it's, you know, so I mean. I'm not the, the expert in that. Exactly. Field by any so, means, is that, I mean, is it eight gigs of really good RAM or is it well, eight imp- gigs of shitty RAM? And I, I, I can't say enough. It's unconfirmed. And imagine a situation where, you know, so last week we saw uh, another price leak rumor of the Quest 3. Well, now it's saying it's going to be 650 USD for the higher end model. All the speculation, you know, pricing wise is all about this higher end model because we already got the pricing on the base uh, 128 gigabyte model. But imagine a situation where the higher end model is not only more storage, but then. More RAM. 12 gigabytes of ram in that much in that more expensive one i'm getting that one already and then that that one just is the nail in the coffin i mean it's still so it's a big nut which you know granted if they split the ram in two different devices meaning one device has eight and the other one has 12 they're obviously developers are going to build for the devices that have tw- uh eight gigs of ram because that's going to be the majority of users well yeah that'll be your minimum though but because you, you can't be building it for the 12 and yeah maxing the thing out correct so it's like some people would argue oh you're not really going to get the full advantage of that 12 but i don't know i have confidence it'll be worth it i mean it's still more than you're getting from the quest too Mm -hmm. so right off the bat you're getting a benefit and from what i've heard from people who have 
put the Quest 3 on and used it. So it, far, they're all pretty impressed. Nobody's and, put it on and goes, it really feels like there's uh, only 8 gigs of RAM in this thing. Well, no. I mean, it's been <laughs> it's been like I've heard it it was actually better than I thought it would be. Um, People who I wouldn't expect for it to be their current go-to for, you know, developing needs, they're admitting that. It's good. That's the one they've been using. And I know for a fact they're more PC VR than, mm-hmm. than standalone, but they're not denying that. Oh, and wait till a year in when people are really optimizing for the Quest 3, really know yeah. how to use it. So, I mean, if, if the two RAM bump isn't your thing, then don't buy it. I mean, I'm going to buy it. Mm-hmm. It's. That one, I want the pancake lenses in the color pass-through. Yeah, look, you know? I, I was sold on the higher-end model if it's just data storage increase, let alone if there is actually any extra oomph to it, then it's a yeah, no. Then it's even I more. I doubt there will be. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath on that. I'm assuming, I'm just going to assume it's going to be 8 gig, gigabytes of RAM, so I'm not yeah. disappointed. If we see any number like 12 or anything like that, it's just a bonus. So if it's 12, then people are going to say, well, geez, the Pro had 12. Mm-hmm. Should be more than twelve. <laughs> you think, or you're saying is no matter what, people are going to complain. There'll always be a, a vocal minority that will complain about no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. If you if they chalked it full of a billion RAM, somebody would say, you know, it would have been nice if they focused more on the you know depth sensors than yeah. There's so much. RAM. There's you know, it's just depending on what's important to you. The the layman isn't going to give a shit. And it'll never know how much RAM it has or doesn't have. Mm-hmm. Or what kind of, you know, system is it actually running on? To them, it's just, you know, it's like owning an Atari back in the day. You put the cartridge in and you turned it on. You didn't know how it worked or why it worked. And you didn't give a shit. Years later, when you started learning about computers is when you're like, oh, man, that's how many bits that was, you know? Or, or that's how much storage is in a floppy disk. But, you know, it's... So I just I don't think you can please everyone. No, I think at never. the end of the day, it's going to be a good product. And even right now, so when we first got into, I guess VR content creation with starting the podcast, you know there was a, a kind of a gatekeeping crowd of I'm not going to name names or anything, and I, I'm not even going to say I dislike them. It's just on this one specific thing, I, I disagree with them. But you know, at the start of our Quest Two journey. Uh, I guess you could say that they were very vocally against standalone VR mm-hmm. and why it sucks. It was like very loud gatekeeping and it, it died down for a while, you know, cause the quest Two hit a point where even if it's not your cup of tea, the sales and everything are kind of undeniable. And then they would just point out retention and, and it, it, you start to be grasping at, at straws. So they, they quieted down a bit, but man, the, the toxicity and the hate leading into the quest connect is like, they're freaking out. They're in overdrive because, like, it's a really good headset that's about to come out. You know, it's. I, I would hate to. It would suck to be a hater, and like try to convince myself that this thing is gonna suck, mm. and like you know, oh, we all grumpy about it because this well, thing's I mean, gonna be the, bad ass. I mean, there are some that they're gonna put it on and be like, oh, it's not it's an index. Garbage. It's not know? an index. Well, regardless of what they say, they're not gonna be pleased with it. And, mm-hmm. But it's like that. I mean. Take 100 people and give them all a freaking Tesla. You're not going to have 100 people going best car ever. Although I'll say we saw it at PAX East, the majority of people that weren't VR users that put on that quest. I don't think I heard anybody saying bad things even. No. But it's like the reception of people trying the quest too at PAX East was phenomenal. Wait till they get it with the pancake lenses. So uh, Yeah. It's, I mean, overall, it's a it's a win for the... Yeah. I'm it's ex- a win for the, the, the VR consumer. Absolutely. So I'm I have a- no... But I, I expect some some funny reviews. Oh, yeah. You know, this week is all speculation in regards to the Quest 3. I'm really hoping next week it's all a wrap-up. I mean, it'll definitely be a wrap-up of the Connect, but, uh, I mean, where we can really discuss it's I mean, when it's coming. And everything's officially out, yeah. and there's no, like, maybe there'll be 8, maybe there'll be 12 gigabytes of RAM. Next week, hopefully, we can say it's coming out for sale this day, pre-order now, it has this 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 and this but man that's the anticipation anyways yeah i'm excited do you think there's going to be any game like drops or news anything like that at connect or you think it's mostly going to be hardware and software related i'm i'm be hard pressed to think there won't be an announcement or two Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I started to get the vibe that it was more about, you know, again, the software, the hardware. And yeah. It's not so much going to be a gaming showcase or studios. anything like that. So I started to even be like, wow, I wonder if they're going to even really show off any game trailers in the ge- in the keynote or if it's going to be purely. But let's see. I, I could see some easy slide-ins. Mm-hmm. Which wouldn't be too difficult. Probably going to be Especially some Astro draft stuff. You're people talking about their games and stuff. So mm-hmm. why couldn't you slide someone in who has a game coming soon? Yeah, that's true. Let's it just see. seems logical. I'm excited for it though. <laughs> I'm I'm re- I'm very excited. Yeah, man. Uh, but in the news of games that came out last week, this one was kind of a stealth one. One of uh, the the studios that we we got involved with their games very early. You know, we always loved them from the first one. You know, for VR. You know, whether that's darts, bowling, Mm -hmm. you know, you name it. It's fun if it's for VR. And they came out with a new game for free. It's available now kind of in beta and on App Lab, kind of early access. It's called Suck It. Suck It. It's a prostitution game. (laughs) No, it's a vacuum cleaning game, actually. (laughs) My first words are... Yep. Sorry, I did some generative AI and you typed in Suck It. How do you know that person over there standing on the corner is not known as the vacuum? (laughs) I don't understand. No, but it's it's an interesting concept. It's definitely a a step away from their normal sports-related things. Yeah, although it appears you collect points, so... That's what it looks like. It almost looks like an old-school... thq game of like i can't explain it like collect this amount of, of coins throughout the level to, to clear the level and get looks, to the next it one it looks kid friendly besides with, the name and with age suck it. although a kid that might go you know over the head I don't even fuck know. man yeah wwe yeah let's get rid of it suck it yeah, yeah cool. and they were thrusting hips when they did it and i saw nothing in the trailer of the guy you know yeah that whipping one was his aggressive. shit out and being like pumping, hey suck it pumping the ring yeah, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. It was yeah. Shawn Michaels. Yeah, Degeneration X was uh, a, a a bit much. That you was know, their nineties era. Dude. Pro wrestling was extreme. I w- I can only say they pushed it. They uh, they pushed it to the the level where they were receiving fines, <laughs> and still continued. Like, you know, you can only imagine Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. You know, double down. You know? I don't give a shit wwe wcw history right there right but that no we we talked about it because that was like the the most vulgar mm-hmm. edgy entertainment there was but for so suck it you know mm-hmm. hey, it's your vacuum cleaner mm-hmm. is what it looked like to me i even said during the trailer i'm like vacuum cleaner sim i might be willing to try it yeah no it's Living an interesting in dirty world interesting concept to say the least i mean i don't think i have anything to compare it to really Besides in the gameplay so, element of collecting coins and I, stuff. I watched the trailer and I still don't know overall like what the whole but we know the studio behind it and it's like you know, I mean they haven't done anything bad yet, so I'm curious, but it, it does look more younger age. Yeah. Well I think all um, four VR marketing. games kind of are family friendly aimed, so they but are, this one but this one more I, aimed at I it, yeah. Bowl with adults, you know. And I can't imagine that the full game will be free. I think it's just free right now because... I don't know. I have no idea what... What they're planning with it. I don't even know what this means. Yeah. I, you know, we haven't personally spoken to anybody. That, go, this came out of nowhere. Is, what the hell is this? What are you guys doing here? I saw a 4 VR post like, our next game sucks. Here it is. All right. And they admit it. Because it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Because it... This get game it? sucks. <laughs> Suck it. No, but it's interesting concept, man. Yeah. I'll give them, you know... Because you could read into their header any way you want, mm-hmm. right? Wasn't it four VR invites you to suck it? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> say what you want. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's weird. It, it's it's a, not what I expected from four VR, and I don't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. No, it's and it's interesting to see what the future direction is too. If we see more of these type of games, they go back to sports. I don't know what they're doing. Nobody knows. I was shocked. This came out of nowhere. Went outside. Unless there's going to be like suck it tournaments. <laughs> Who can suck it faster? My goodness. Suck it, suck up the most. Senior senior sucks a lot. Senior sucks a lot. Hmm. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, for VR with suck it VR, you know, available for free <clears throat> on App Lab. Try it now. Yeah. See uh, what it's about. 
I got two more, and then we'll take a little little ad break, and then we'll we'll go from there. I figured we should probably take an ad break earlier rather than later. Sometimes I'm like, oh shit, yeah, ad break, huh? Right. So Oops. we'll get it out of the way in a couple more. Oops. Uh, <laughs> but coming up, you know, uh, the game's not out yet. It actually comes out October fifth, but I guess you could say to use right around the corner to use industry lingo. The embargo's lifted. You know, we're allowed to talk about it and such. Dungeons of Eternity. It was one of the games showed off at the MetaQuest Gaming Showcase earlier this year. And it's a a dungeon crawling game, but cooperative. That's where the game shines. Yeah, single player, you can fuck off. Yeah, you can suck it, actually. Suck it. Uh, so <laughs> based off of the trailer of it, I love the concept of it. It's kind of, I, w- I don't want, know if I want to use the word procedurally generated. Maybe that's what it is, but it's like randomly generated dungeons. Like what, every 10 minutes? Yeah, every like 10, 15 minutes it resets and they, they come up with new ones. So like a bunch of different random design layouts and enemy types and stuff like that. So it's really cool. And there's like three different type runs you can do. A dungeon run, one to get souls to the make soul potion. Run, crystal so yeah. run. And then one to get exo points to upgrade your guy. And you can do avatar customization. And there's a bunch of different type of weapons. The weapons are randomly generated, you know, so there can be a bunch of different types and names and appearances for them all just random so i mean it's got great potential and you know we were able to try it you know we haven't played a whole whole bunch you know a couple hours you know well, we we want to we want our run though not our first one by any means so the no, t- first one we get smoked they they have you do a tutorial which is a little lengthy it's probably like 40 minutes in total they have you do Teach you how to move, teach you your whole outpost layout, teach you here's your character, here's this, here's how you start a dungeon run, which we always seem to to brain fart on still every time because like you select your dungeon and then you hit launch mission and then you go into this room and you go on these pads. <laughs> just so used to like we click launch mission, we just sit there and shit starts. And do, 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 like, like, why isn't it starting? Oh like, shit, oh, we yeah, gotta, yeah, gotta then go you to think, your pad. You think next dungeon, it wouldn't happen again, but then we do it again. It's kind of funny how that goes. But they teach you the whole game. Then they have you do like a dungeon run by yourself. And you're like, yeah, the game seems fun, you know. But the real joy of it shows in co-op. You know, you have like a, a weapon on your your side, like a melee weapon to start a sword. You have a throwing axe and you have a, a bow and arrow. But then you can get different type of weapons like crossbows, staffs, that type of stuff. And the game is just freaking fun. I mean, so far I'm loving it. Our first run after the tutorial, how long do you think we lasted? 30 seconds? 40 yeah, seconds? Like 30 seconds. It I was, don't even know what dungeon we picked or what the hell. It was just a random dungeon one. We got torqued, dude. I walked by a barrel, and there's these barrels and stuff you can destroy to get items and stuff in them, but some of them are what I will say booby trapped. And I walked by one and exploded, so I was almost dead. And we walk up to an enemy, and I ran up to him so confident. And he just one shot at me. Boom. So you just see me go down. You're freaking dying. You're like, what happened to you? Then I see this guy just chasing you. Oh, man. So it was he, evil. He came at you with bad intentions. You're like, get away from me. Get away from me. And he murked us. And then we probably got fucked up our next couple of dungeons. Yeah. And then we got a win. And it felt good to get a win, dude. Well, it, it there's a little, yeah, it's not even weird to say a learning curve because it's essentially a slash poke situation going on here so harder than i thought it would be nothing that we're not used to but it's yeah it was a lot harder than i expected so so we'll do a full review of it i i'm not surprised we we got you know smoked on that first one yeah we still now i'm i'm a lot more confident for sure for sure we got a win under us yeah we'll definitely go into a full review though yeah definitely not ready for it yet if you want a, a fun really fun one so far i'd recommend it yeah fun co-op dungeon crawling game you like co-op gaming you know you like this progression type of, and all, yeah. yeah you got levels and all that there's so much potential so dungeons of eternity comes out october 5th but you can pre-order it now for 10 percent off nice why not so if you know you're gonna get it why get it not now. so tell them rough talk vr sent you too so one last one and then we'll <laughs> we'll grab an ad break uh on that news of embargoes lifting and games coming out Another game that we got to try a little early. We're not ready for a full review yet, but we can at least say we've tried it and give some early thoughts on it real quick like we just did. This one's Hellsweeper VR. Love it. Yeah. Love it. You're loving it. 
Love right, it. Right away when you did the tutorial, you did the tutorial before me, and you were like, dude, go do that shit. Yep. You were like, you got to. There's so many things I'm, I'm really enjoying about it. It goes pretty in depth, too. Like, they have you do a tutorial, and then when you're done, you can get into playing. But if you look in the, the little outpost area, there's more advanced tutorials with, like, somersault movements, flips. The game is pretty intense. The graphics are nice on the quest. It's funny I'm going to say that, and there might be... I didn't mean to poke any bears. I'll get into that a little bit in a second. But the gameplay is fun. The concept of it, the hand fighting, the physics of it is good. There's one time I was... When I killed one of the enemies, his body was on the ground. I was like poking him with my sword. I'm like, man, you know, the fish in it are, are really good. Cut off the arm. I had the arm right there, you know. So the game's fun and it's co op as well. Mm -hmm. So we're not ready for a review of that one yet either. But so no. far, I so far, close. that one's out now. Dungeons of Eternity and Hellsweeper VR, two really good cooperative games. Hellsweeper VR also, you know, it's on PlayStation VR too came out with some a little bit of heat on the PlayStation VR 2 version because it had the same exact graphics as the Quest 2, mm -hmm. and people weren't too happy with They're that. They're fixing that, though. They came out with a big statement and said, look, in order to get it out <laughs> now as as one launch together, we, we couldn't do separate splits like that, you know, but they said stay tuned very soon. They'll have a full graphical overhaul for PlayStation VR 2. So if you're a PlayStation VR 2 player... Don't worry, they haven't abandoned you. The graphics are going to be updated specifically for the console coming soon. But they figured it was better to get the game into your hands, be able As to play a, it a little bit. Get well, the it shows you the power of the Quest user versus... Well, it's just player-based size. 20 million headsets sold versus... Well, that's what I'm saying. It's I don't like, know how many PlayStation... So you VR can't really get about. upset about it. You should just understand that that's the only way it's going to work for... A, unless they sell 20 million... PSVR 2s. Yeah. But I, in order to do that, you need to sell much more than much more PlayStation 5s than they have. You know? It's going to be so. interesting in conjunction with the Quest 3 sales. What do the Quest 2 sales continue to look like? Yeah. That's because I mean, it's not like they're going to stop. No. There's going to be people who are going to be like, oh, I don't want to spend the 600. I'll spend or the 500, but, but I'm I'll getting spend 300. I still want to play with my friends or whatever. So it's going to be interesting. Buy it for your kid instead. You know, why would you get the $600 Quest 3, you know? Mm -hmm. I get it. I, it sounds like... I get the impression the Quest 2 will be supported for a bit. Fuck yeah. You know, it's like... There's they, no reason for it not to be. I'm curious how the sales of this Quest 3 do right at launch. I think they're going to do be really phenomenal. good. I think they're going to be really good. They could sell less and they're still going to make more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because... So it's like yeah, it costs more money, so... Yeah. I'm excited. I think this is going to be a badass headset. I, I can't wait to get my hands on one. I'm dying to man. It's probably why we didn't get invited to connect. Yeah, we'd be leaving with duffel bags full of I shit can't. that's not bolted down. It's gonna be a good show. You know, uh, I'll try to live stream it. The keynote, if you know, scheduling and and work stuff allows. Hopefully next year, if they continue the in person stuff, we can oh, attend. Yeah. Yes, that would be that would be very cool. And again, I no. wouldn't be upset about it. No, well, no matter what though, <laughs> can't say it enough. We'll be at PAX East in March, so. Stay tuned if you want to see the rough talk crew. I will be there. Boys will be there in Boston. Putting on the miles. Mm hmm. Hitting the the road mics again. We did a little podcasting in the car yeah. last time. Next time we'll have labs for it so we don't need to do the handheld mic. We're well, it looks so silly as we're driving down 91. And hey, did you hear that we have a gaming showcase coming up in February? I heard, I heard rumor of um, such a thing. Friday, February 2nd, live on YouTube or premiering on YouTube, we're going to have. Our first ever Rough Talk VR gaming showcase. So if you're a developer, publisher, you know, you've been working on a game, you have some new stuff to show off, whether that's the announcement of your game, updates, you know, new info about your game, whatever, you know, and you want to show it off at the Rough Talk VR gaming showcase, you know, visit the, the link in our show notes or go to roughtalkvr.com, click on the showcase link and enter your info there and we'd love to showcase your game. I guess on that note, we should probably take our ad break, huh? Yes. So. Please. <laughs> I broke my pen. How tragic. So Violent, dude. It's Hellsweeper. It's all this VR you play. Hellsweeper. V video games making you violent? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my argument. No, I always loved that argument. Yeah. that's what They used to say it about Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons was, was like, like the churches, dude. They went fucking apeshit. Yeah. Isn't that so funny to, to like look back on? 
It's like so ridiculous. If these motherfuckers had TikTok back then, they would have been like, oh my God, he's here now. <laughs> They're playing with the devil's it's, dice. It's not, the devil's dice. This is not satanic. I've seen this, it. This is the devil. You know what it was? Is like the, the complexity of Dungeons think, and Dragons was far yeah. above the knowledge of any parent at the time. They just <laughs> didn't fucking get it. So it must be must be witchcraft because you got all these kids. And let's be honest, some look, of them they're get, having fun. Some of them are getting a character and shit, you know. And it's like smack the shit out of them. Stop open, having fun. Open your door in the seventies, and there's four little kids there, each dressed like fucking little wizards and shit. And Jimmy, like, what did I tell you about laughing on Sundays? So, oh yeah, you get the shit beat out of you in the seventies, dude. <laughs> Different times, man. Like you, 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 you could be getting your ass kicked and looking out a window, and like neighbors be having a picnic in their fucking yeah. yard. Do you need a hand? And everyone gonna look up and be like, "Oh yeah, that kid fucked up." <laughs> like you, you be like half out the window, crawling for your life for help, screaming. Help. Mom comes with the hand, dude. <sighs> nobody would. I mean, I don't even think cops would Seven? show up for shit like that. No, they probably would ask you if you need like, a what hand do you hear? to help. I hear somebody beating the shit out of their kid. And like, I probably fucking deserved it. Do you need a hand with that? You know, that's be what uh, different times. No, that's different assault. times. <laughs> different different times. Someone, yeah, because dude, they'd give. Don't every one of my friends' parents had permission to destroy me if mm-hmm. they needed to, and it was made clear. Same thing with uh, private school. Mm-hmm did a couple of years at private school and the nuns had permission to smack you around mm-hmm. if they wanted i never got hit by a nun so <laughs> and they were old and crusty they'd probably hit you in their fucking forearm or snap <laughs> but <laughs> nonetheless so uh wherever we left off on that regard i don't right. we we're, were on going a, to the we're going to an ad break that's right that's how we got there i just don't yes. know how we got oh dungeons and dragons so, so yeah, still, still the spanking nuns. I promise you, still want to go apply for our showcase, right? So, nonetheless, if you've been enjoy- <laughs> enjoying this episode, subscribe, rate us five stars, go check out our official podcast Discord, where you know we got tons of great game meetups, VR discussion, food Just a pictures, fucking banging community, man. Yeah, it's active, it's non toxic, it's mature. You know that's an important thing to say. It's very like you can bug King Canuck and brain spam all day every day for <laughs> ghosts of the war runs like they don't have lives they yes. love that shit both canuck Go in there and, and just bug the hell out of them both canuck and brain spam they definitely crush it with their to bore runs well, you you'll know see them post you know their what's winnings. cool man is like people have heard this and they've come into the discord server and they said hey <laughs> yeah, i'm only that. here because i want to play ghosts of Tabor. who's the Tabor guy for help who's, who's the person i should be asking for and it's like oh you know you could ask and of course you tag the people you're talking about Mm -hmm. and then um as soon as like brain spam or king canuck sees it they usually are like yeah you know here's you know the usual schedule and all and then it happens and it's it's cool because people are not only getting like a a, they're getting a good non-toxic first time experience to get to learn so it's that's important man and they get good good looting you know, you'll see their winnings. <laughs> yeah. it, ain't, it ain't like they're coming back with chocolate bars, no, you know? No, no. not coming not always, back with peaches. It's not always wins. Nobody's 100% no. in that game. But when it's good, man, it's good. They get some good ones for Sometimes sure. Sometimes you hit a little rut. That's all, you know, that yeah. happens to me. So I'll oh, just go 100. through little spells of like, I don't feel like I, I could have a cannon and I'll fucking lose. Mm-hmm. Anybody, could, your, your nephew could beat me, you know? Yeah. It's like, then you go into that run and you have a really good run and you got really good mm-hmm. loot and then you fucking get back and you start unloading and you're like, dude, I need to go back right now. You could kill somebody with a pistol. No problem, yes. you know? I, 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 Discord has grown on me so much. I love it. Well, I think it's because... From like a couple of years ago. It's when we first started it, like first started the podcast discord mm-hmm. was, i did not understand it but now discord's like that's that's the place to be is Dude, i love our podcast discord remember when you started the channel and i'm like how do i even find this mm-hmm. you can't find this is this some private club you have to get invited to it what then, does this do that we can't just do keep doing on reddit can we do this on facebook messenger <laughs> no but this understand the purpose discord's the best it's so yeah, like man. like our you, community's the best and you, you've made the comparison of the old school irc channels and that's it's like just a collection of yeah, like it a hundred percent is just like that of, of dedicated irc channels that de- just mm-hmm. rough they've got VR. different bot programs in use mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know which one gets on my nerves though the friend time friend time yeah every time i don't know what it is he's so sensitive she it 
It's so sensitive. So when when that happens, am I the only one that sees all the time zones pop up? No, everybody does. It's like, get the hell out of here. I delete them. I think I even said F you, friend. So now it's a running meme to me. Now it's like an internal meme. Yeah. 100%. I'm like, and it puts the little clock on your yeah. little clock. I'm like, I didn't ask you to, I wasn't asking what time it was. I yeah. just put somewhere in there like five o'clock or something. You're like, shit. it's peanut butter jelly time. Just so you know, this is the times all across the world. <laughs> like, fuck you, friend time. <laughs> but its purpose, its 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 betterment well, is imagine, a lot more than yeah, we, that we, one We say little, that, the, hey, there's a meetup at 4 p.m. Yeah. What's 4 p.m.? Yeah, especially when we got people in. Well, again, that's where we'll come down to like the other mods, like a million shit who set up these these awesome game meetups. Well, not just that, the ability to like Amelia's gangster with the polls. So it's like mm-hmm. knowing everybody's time zone, what what headsets people play on, what games people actually have. There's an area for all that, and it's like. And then we got shoes crushing it too with the giveaways. We got weekly giveaways yeah, that he I, manages. I, I don't even. I can't keep. So up. you can go in there. You can just enter giveaways for keys too. But engage, be part of the, the community. There's like post requirements still, because we, you know. But you go in there, you say hi, hi, hi. I'm deleting those. Those don't count, mofo. I love the uh, Joe Blow joined the server, waved and left. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it confuses me. Like, why would why would that even? Well, be that a was thing? going on a bit when we were doing the quest giveaway. No, that I get, but yeah. it, it happened with two or three people oh, in the past no, no. week. Uh, I'll explain that on a technical side. So, okay. uh, if they left without saying anything, so example, they joined two months ago for the giveaway, mm-hmm. and they've just sat there, and now then they left, left. It'll say waved and left, okay. even though they didn't just join. Okay, yeah. It's like a technical wording thing. I get why you would, why you think it though. Yeah, I, I was looking at it and I'm like, what the hell? What? Why would you even wait? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking join. Why would you join? <laughs> I don't understand. So, nonetheless, definitely go join our podcast Discord. Go, go support I'll tell you that. what, some people got some great Discord names too, man. Oh, yeah. And definitely go support us on Patreon, you know, where we get a bunch of different perks like weekly on air shout out. You know, everybody on the the Patreon, they get access to an exclusive chat room in our Discord server. On that wow. note, I want to give a, a quick shout out to these following people on our on our on air shout out on our Patreon. Dun, 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 dun. So huge shout out to our Patreon supporters: Jake, Earth Witness, a Sim, Crispy, Shoes, and Amelia. So thank you all for your continued support. You know, month after month, and as well if you're a listener. You got the spare change you want to throw us some, you know, definitely go check out the Patreon, give you an on-air shout out and access to that uh that famous Patreon champion Discord server as well. So, we'll be back with you in in just a moment, but actually, before I forget, one of our Discord members, TPZ, he actually TPZ. He actually uh donated a couple keys for some upcoming uh giveaways, and we actually have had a bunch for one of uh 3 pound games games uh space dragon unchained their community ma- manager live <laughs> open mike who hangs out in our discord a bit great a content creator too fucking fun game to fly into yeah dragons as arms so th- he donated a good handful of keys so huge thanks to tpz and live open mike for helping keep the giveaways going in our discord server too so on that note we'll be back with you in just a moment after this message from these sponsors hey there everyone are you a developer or studio who's dreamed of taking your vr project to the next level but felt lost in the vast landscape of the metaverse? Well, we've got news for you. Meet our newest sponsor, Impact Reality XR. These aren't just any professionals. They're a dedicated team of content creators, brand managers, IT experts, and so, so much more, specifically focused on the XR industry. Remember the immersive experience of Ghost of Tabor or the pulsating beats of Synth Riders? Yep, those incredible titles worked with Impact Reality XR. From our personal journey in the VR space, There's something reassuring about seeing Impact Reality XR affiliated with the game. And why? Because it means we're stepping into a world where attention to detail and professional execution are a given. They are one of the only PR companies dedicated specifically to the XR industry. At Rough Talk VR, their involvement is like a seal of quality for us. So, whether you're in need of marketing, consulting, influencer relations, or even a snazzy press box to make an impression, Impact Reality XR has got you covered. Dive into the metaverse with confidence and let Impact Reality XR truly impact your reality. 
Developers and studios ready to elevate your VR experience, head over to impactrealityxr.com and fill out the contact form. Your vision deserves the spotlight, and Impact Reality XR knows just how to get it there. Today, we're here with a sponsor for your bouncing bundle of joy. No, we're not talking about a baby. We're talking about your baby makers. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. But just like babies, your delicate little guys have sensitive skin and deserve products that are not only skin safe, but made with safe ingredients. That's where Manscaped's Platinum Package comes in. From razors to shower care, this package goes above the gold standard for your body hair. So treat your beautiful boys to the world's finest toys at manscaped.com and use the code ROUGHTALKVR for 20% off plus free shipping. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. Inside this Platinum Package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo Plus Conditioner, Ultra Premium Deodorant, Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner, Anti-Chafing Boxers, and the Shed Travel Bag to hold your goods while traveling. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof so you can shave with less mess. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all bases from head to toe and hair to ball fro. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code ROUGHTALKVR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code ROUGHTALKVR. Use the Platinum Package because the gold standard is no longer good enough. Hey, Rough Talk VR listeners. Are you looking for a transformative escape within the realm of VR? Dive into the tranquil world of Mindway, the premier VR meditation and wellness app exclusively on MetaQuest. Just imagine floating through serene landscapes, immersing yourself in relaxation, pushing past the day's stresses, and nurturing your inner space. Mindway isn't just any VR experience. It's where science meets serenity helping you discover a better, more grounded version of yourself. What's unique about Mindway? They've made meditation bite-sized and manageable for our busy lives. Whether you're seeking a quick mindfulness break, soothing ASMR moments, or a digital sleeping pill to drift into dreamland, Mindway has got you covered. And with features like peer support, a beautiful original soundtrack, and scientifically developed content, your journey towards mental strength and happiness is in reliable hands. Join the thousands who are already embracing this new chapter of mental well-being. So if you're ready for a revolutionary self-care journey right into your VR headset, then make your next stop Mindway VR. Click, breathe, transform. Download Mindway on MetaQuest today and find out why happiness truly is, as they say, a state of Mindway. And we are back. And Fast Travel Games, who last week they announced a new... <laughs> Is that you're being fast Flash travel? Travel. Yeah, fast travel has been Give on fire. Give us the money, we'll get you to the store. <laughs> Basically, fast. yeah. Travel. They, they make their own in-house games. Like last week, they teased a new one, Mannequin, that they're Don't making in-house. give us in-house. The money, we'll laugh you out the door. <laughs> but in terms of publishing, too, their no, their publishing ring is on fire. They're great. And they announced... They know what they're doing. That's the that's the facts with them. Is you're, you're, it's money well spent if you need their help. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be honest if whether they can even well, get you say, to that level. They and have a good vision, it seems, of the games that they've partnered with. We are one, they, Broken they Edge. They know what they're doing over there. Yeah, for sure. Them guys at Fast Travel are watching <laughs> you. <laughs> no, Sorry. Well, it's good for indie devs. I love seeing these type of publishers exist because imagine if they didn't exist. Like These games would just be floating, you know? So it's oh. sometimes that's that boost you need. And the industry reaches a point where you have people who have made the connections. They know they already know the criteria. They know what what I's need to be dotted and T's need to be mm-hmm. crossed, and, and who oops, who needs to be told. Yep. Too. That's so also sometimes like they they seem to have an eye for for some winners. So yeah. I you know when we see them, we always laugh. Like you want to get it there fast. You mm-hmm. go to fast travel, but they're good at what they do. Nope. So, I mean, if I were looking to get a game, you know, through the system, I would probably reach out to them first. Hell like, yeah. Can you help me? Are you guys interested? <laughs> I got this great idea. No, it's it's jokes. It's like, it's serious. But so yeah. they have in-house I just games. Spoof on it. 
It, well, because they're, they're so dominant, you know? It'd be better if their name was Slow Travel and they were getting shit up there so mm-hmm. quick. But it's just ironic. Just ironic that it's fast travel. Like a big guy called Tiny, you know? It's yeah, funny. Exactly. Or Little, like you call a big guy Little. Yeah. Like Little D. What's up, Little D? I had a vertically stunted friend. We used to call him, you know, legs. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Or whatever. I'm, I'm sure if it, it's funny if he liked it too, you know? Yeah. Well, it's the 70s, 80s. He didn't have a choice, you know? Did watch a little person fuck someone up in a bar though at a at a metal show mm-hmm. head butted right in the nuts and brought the guy down and the guy didn't think he was gonna he got like that you know mm-hmm. boxers that, whap, whap, whap. that was it fight over i was like holy shit it that's a rude like, awakening doesn't sound like it's the first time he's been head butt uh, like done the head butt to the balls no nah, this was a badass dude like going in the mosh pits and shit mm-hmm. and you know in, in honesty you're no taller than a waist that's that's balls, dude. Because mm-hmm. those knees and feet are flying. But nonetheless, Anyways, so fast travel. They they I love the a, shit that pops into my head when I'm right. talking. They got a, a partnership announced with a new studio called Moonhead Games. I'm sorry, Moonhood Games. It's such a good name, Moonhood. <laughs> I said Moonhead at first. Moonhead. But, I was like picturing, oh, this is a great game, just floating in zero gravity. I could totally see a game character someday called Moonhead. Moonhead. Yo, Moonhead. That's the VR porn movie I made, actually. <laughs> Why do they Moonhead. call you Moonhead? Because your head's so big, it keeps blocking all my shit. Get the fuck out of here. It's Let the sun shine. <laughs> Moonhead. <laughs> but Moonhood game, so. Moonhood. That was a great fuck up. Oh, man. I sometimes I can't even be your mad mind's at Mine's in it. the ghetto. Yeah, so Moonhood games, you know, they... They'll be partnering with Fast Travel to release their first game, which isn't announced yet. All they showed was that they're like working with sculptors to make 3D models that they'll then 3D scan to include in the game. It Instead seems of using like 100% digital computer animation, yeah. yeah. Using actual sculptors. Man, they're flexing is what they're doing. I mean, and like, are they going to be doing... Expect If you're going for more of like a clay aesthetic in the game then it's a no-brainer too i'm curious if they're just not though and they're just using that as like a revolutionary new like base modeling i don't know but it was kind of interesting well what makes it really interesting is is the quality of scan is going to be remarkable so it should unless they render it to like cartoony graphics Mm -hmm. it, it should really freaking pop like if it's a we you can see on the trailer like some of the the monsters and shit they're making it's like it could be picture quality so dude. it'll be interesting dude what are you up to fast travel yeah with your clay making and moonhood moonhood so keep moon an hood. eye out for whatever vr moon game they're, they'll be working on that's huge but fast travel games continuing to spot greatness so another another game that was announced and teased and this one i'm, I'm actually really excited for uh, excuse me as while I talk about it and then I pass it to you, I actually got to look up to see if there was a release date shown or anything because I, I seem to have missed that, but it's called Track Cart and it's a mixed reality circuit racing game in your living room. And this one seems like uh, sometimes the, no- the mixed reality uses, you know, they could be a little bit more novelty. Mm. This one looks like freaking controllable Hot Wheels yeah. in my freaking house. Matchboxes, ha- Hot Wheels. Dude! But- not paying the licensing fees for no, that. No, no, but it seemed like you so could we build it. Call co- that Hot Wheels, or it seemed like you could build the tracks. You need to like build it to complete you 100%, objectives. You hundred percent build the tracks in your. I don't know your if play it's, space in I, your. I don't know if it's sandbox or with an objective. Well, you can share the tracks, and that was huge. You were asking at mid trailer. You were like, "Can you share? Yeah, can we share? You can share the tracks. This would be kind of cool." And then boom, and then boom, they show it on the screen. Shared tracks community, you know. So that's got potential. So I see it comes out in October, but I don't see an actual exact date. There's a couple upcoming releases that are like that, uh, that say. But I'll play that. A month, but not an exact date. But so it's coming out next month. I'm curious how the controls will be. Mm-hmm. There's a demo available now on App Lab and SideQuest that has 20 available tracks to, to do, but the full game coming next month. And I don't think the full game will be free like the demo is or anything like that. I'm thinking not. (laughs) No, but it's interesting. You know, it was hard to tell between like it's how much is going to be mission orientated, how much is going to be objective based versus sandbox. But regardless, yeah, I'm interested in definitely a a better use of mixed reality than I've seen in other cases. 
when I can do it in color, I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to it. That one was a little bit more than a novelty, it seemed like. Yeah, I'm down to I'm down to play it, man. Yeah, like a marbles game. Trailer would be good. Imagine a marbles game. Marbles. Yeah, you know, like you roll mar- marbles down the track. One of the, <laughs> one of the, the mother gunship forge developers. He's been working on a game like that, a marbles game, and I think he wants it to have VR support. I'm like, man, that's such a good idea. It's like just like dominoes. a track. Like, dominoes would be good. We've talked about Legos, like knocking down. Imagine having a whole room full of mm-hmm. in your your house, so you could have it going down your table, and then mm-hmm. well. That's the Rube Gold, Goldberg game that we're holding off on until color pass through. I still say it though, Legos. If it supports it. Legos, Legos, Legos. It's a no-brainer for VR. I'll say it till my head explodes. But we got a couple hardware news and then a couple more software news and we can wrap this baby up. But, you know, we've been pretty big on eyeing the big screen beyond headset. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we can't get it. No PC VR, but just like in terms of eyeing consumer reviews and stuff. We had some some watchful eyes on that one, and so far it's impressed. But another software company, or another software app maker, Immersed, they're like a productivity app that's free on the MetaQuest. It's for people that really want to work in VR. It gives you screens. You can work collaboratively. There's a lot of... It's a very highly regarded app, and they announced a couple weeks ago that they were working on a headset, and they officially unveiled it. And it's going to be... They have a, a 2.5K resolution per eye, uh, per lens version for $500. And then they have a 4K per lens edition for $750. And it literally looks like sunglasses. Now, I don't think, to be fair, it has the full tracking potential stand like by itself as a VR headset. It, it'll have some hand tracking and stuff. But I don't know if it'll be fully supported for like VR titles and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But it's going to have the newest Snapdragon XR processor chip in it. So it'll, it should have some standalone functionality. It just seemed like that there was some more questions I have about it before like. Well, yeah, there's a lot of questions about it. But it's, in, dude, when you <laughs> see it, it's sunglasses. It's It yeah. looks so light. Sure it is. I mean, well, it's it's cool to see another one of these software companies going in the hardware space. And if it's specifically for productivity, like, look, maybe it's not the best for playing Thrill of the Fight. No, but just, if you're but like, you, you're going to have to justify the, and I get we're going to see even more companies mm-hmm. coming into the market, but it's like, you, you best have a, a good purpose for it to justify it or else people are just going to use their current technology. Because now, now you're going to have, well, you how know. much does two monitors cost at a really high end? More and, than five hundred. And allegedly, you got Apple coming into the game, which is gonna well, that's which where, is geared for the ultimate professional as well. Well, that's where a lot of people were saying about this that this is more of like a competitor, a cheaper, not version of the Apple Vision Pro because it doesn't have the same mixed reality and stuff like that. But like for people looking to go productivity, it'll be a much cheaper option. You know, you so, look at seven fifty as the highest end model, or five hundred for the cheaper versus three hundred. Or thirty five hundred. They're about to learn the same lesson that PC computers did in every single company across America. That solitaire probably gets put on pound for pound more than Excel. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So it's like if you gear to at least the gamer or offer that, I think you're guaranteeing yourself some. Which they haven't said that they're not. And, That's but more just going into it with like it's further. I laugh anytime I see a program. It's, it's for getting business done. And yeah. I go into it and I'm like, I see the desk and the whiteboards and all that. And please, they're, like, they're all the fucking same. <laughs> and ain't nobody ever in there. It's like. <laughs> You're not 100% sold yet. Uh, you know. You got, you can't. For certain, for certain, you know, for certain jobs, yeah, in the tech industry, I totally get it. I mean, hello, it makes total sense. But that's a different. But you're that's... saying you still need gaming. You still need gaming. Yeah. To sell it. Like in, if, unless it's like packaged with your proprietary program so that you offer. If you knew for a fact that this thing could handle good VR gaming standalone yeah. for seven fifty, would you look at the four K resolution? I would try one? it. Just to see what Yeah, five hundred for the know, cheaper model is not bad. So I guess it really does come down well. to to what this thing can actually do. I have a lot of questions, but I'm sure we'll learn. But that'll more. be like anybody's headset. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't care what it costs, I'd still want to know. I I'll never pay for the apple one but mm-hmm. i'd still love to 
to try it and be like, you know, is it seemingly feel mm-hmm. worth that money? And Immerse is going the big screen beyond route with having it custom fitted to your head yeah. with the pre-order. Like you order it, it's you send it your scan. So big screen and immersed, you know, they're not aimed at me, both in like Mm-mm. cost and, you know, I don't have PC VR he- hardware, but I don't know. I like to see that people are going the route of trying to get the lightest, yeah, most the power. Smallest, yeah. yeah. How much yeah, exactly? Is it going to be the best selling headset today? No, but now we're getting that technology developed and maybe in five years, that's just how all headsets are. Because now somebody's done it already. I could I could see headsets being like those those round glasses you see with the sides. That yeah, a hundred percent. No bigger than that. You know, just the the old school like sci fi visor almost. The you know, the thin visor. one. I'll Do take you... the. I'd rather the round goggles. Yeah. <laughs> the like, I can't remember what the steampunk yeah. like, goggles. And it would just make sense for those to have like AR and mixed reality. Right now we're at skiing goggles. Mm-hmm. We're getting there. But if you look at even the re- evolution of ski goggles, they're pretty bulky back in the day, and now they're much more. I remember a while ago I saw some like just beta app that somebody was working on for pass through where you could walk around in your house mm-hmm. and it would show you the Wi Fi strength at various points in your house with pass through app points. Yeah. And it's like that's such a great use of pass through. You put on your headset, you go, "Where is my headset?" Until <laughs> so you find out where the refrigerator is is the strongest. strongest. You're like, "God damn it! Man, I just I put it there move. last week." Every time I move the. <laughs> find out the thing's just a scam yeah sometimes ignorance is bliss and you, you might not want to know where you're you know right now even for us we could my router's right there for all i know we're in the weakest spot right maybe i don't want to know but nonetheless it's stuff like that i could totally see us one day just having glasses you walk around with and all the all the time you're getting that type of feedback like maybe not about wi-fi but just about other stuff in day-to-day let's see I'd say, I mean, in a perfect world, I'd like a situation where you don't need any glasses. No. But and it can just be digitally created in your living space. But how would that? You would need a projector. I mean, how? Fucking nobody knew how to do standalone like this. I know. It's not a matter of how. It's just a matter For, of so when. So how, how do you get an image to appear? Just the fabrics, man. The fabrics, <laughs> special shit and the nanotechnologies. I don't know. Kind of like Star Trek's um, holodeck. Mm-hmm. just a fucking empty box mm-hmm. i had a documentary man i used to talk about that the hundred year plan and so far to me it's it's happening because i'm i'm seeing like you know as vr gets more socially acceptable and then you you reach a line where if if you could come home and create a virtual world within your living space without the need for goggles how much need do you ever have to leave the house get what i'm saying so, yeah, I still like uh, I still like going for a nice morning walk every day. But you think? But maybe you could yeah. just do it in your house. Yeah, it was it was a creepy. Um, I don't think it'll ever be the same as actual sensory feedback. Don't but know. Let's see. Let's don't see. Know. But I once can... once the brain can be fooled mm-hmm. between no difference than you're sitting there on a treadmill, you feel the wind in your breath, your face, the smells of the decaying leaves in the fall. It's, it, it's creepy shit, man. Yeah, it sounds almost a little dystopian. I think that nothing beats the real. It was a good documentary is all I'm going to say. In, in the news of, of you know new games coming out, this is another example of uh, a month without an exact date, but a very hyped game, for myself at least, Racket Club. Mm-hmm. It's a game made by Resolution Games. Excited for this one. Yet to be a bad one from them. I mean, this one looks like a lot of fun. And it now has a release date officially in December. When in it's December? Coming. I don't know when in December. Could be the last day. Could be the first day. But it's coming. It'll be someday in December. Mm-hmm. Someday in December. 2023. Yeah, no, but I'm I'm excited for this one, man. Resolution Games is... They don't disappoint. They have Demio Battles coming out, and they have Racket Club coming out. So very active on their end. Oh, their studio doesn't fuck around. No, it doesn't. Period. And one piece of news I actually meant to go over before the ad break, but it appears I skipped over it. It's a big one this week. We got an official release date and a new trailer for Assassin's Creed VR. Yeah, yeah, Assassin's yeah. Creed Nexus. And their trailer, it says in the, the trailer captured in-game. I'm sorry. It says in the trailer captured in-engine, not in-game. But one of their developers on Twitter was like, no, that's the... 
the real footage, but we've seen a couple developers and we've had some good back and forth discourse, even in our own discord, where it doesn't seem like a lot of people are, are believing that because the graphics looked really good well, in the trailer. It'd be awesome if it's true. Yeah. I mean, this is a hype one. A lot of people thought that this was dead in the water because mm-hmm. there was no news coming out about it. Like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. But then all of a sudden there was, and now it's looking very polished and it's coming out November 16th. So this is going to be big, man. Assassin's Creed is a big, big title. Oh, it's a good one. It's going to get that like outside the VR niche coverage, which I also think at times might be a little overrated, but it's going to be cool. It's going to, it's going to sell some headsets without a doubt. There's some diehard Assassin's Creed fan or people that go, you know, oh, there's no games on the quest and you tell them Assassin's Creed. I don't think that argument holds any weight no. anymore. No, I know it doesn't. I don't, I don't it doesn't even accept that. But like fucking vocabulary. How can you how can you say that when there's Assassin's Creed on the headset? You know what I mean? That's a big, big title coming to it. So November sixteenth. They got a lot to live up to. Yeah. Because most big titles that come fall flat. So this, and this would is, be I'd love for this one to not follow similar suit. And this is their first Ubisoft. This is their first endeavor into standalone VR on the quest. So this is I mean, I, I understand your nerves. We see EA go to Oh, it's not my quest. I, it's not my nerves. I'm the consumer. Yeah. Well, you know? I'm nervous about it as a consumer of what it's gonna be. Is it gonna mm-hmm. be a situation like EA and yeah. respawn with code and code masters or code breakers, I'm sorry. Uh it's I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm I, I I'm I have faith. Until I hear anything directly bad, I won't assume bad, but yeah, like I'm it seems too bad. good. I'm just hoping that it's not it seems too good to be true. To suit, that's all. This seems too good to be true. That's all I'll say. Based off of that trailer and everything, I'm like, damn, if they really pulled off a high quality Assassin's Creed on the Quest 2 and Quest 3, props. Because this is going to be a tough one. But Assassin's Creed officially coming November 16th. I'm yeah, so yeah, excited yeah. for it. Dude, they're gonna you get to get gonna get to play as several different characters in the Assassin's Creed series, including my boy Ezio. So that's all I that's all I care about. I'm happy. So Another game that that's out now in early access on beta, Glass Breakers. I've been loving this one. It's from Polyarch. It's, you know, very strategic. I always say reference when we play each other, there's no talking. But they announced that they have a new champ coming out next week. Well, I'm sorry, this week. It's called Mojo. I love the name. And his character, it seems like he grabs people as one ability and can pull them towards them. And I was instantly like, man, <laughs> that's a game changer. Because imagine there's somebody attacking your ice thing. And then like, so you grab them from behind and just get away from there. And then you start messing them up versus Yank like a couple of tiles over. Yeah. Versus needing to wait for you to be able to get all the way over there. Or just con- there's so many strategic ways you could use that pulling. And depending on his power, or his defense, I'm like, man, that's a that's a good champion. Maybe you play someone who has the same champion. I guess you're just pulling, pulling each, each other. other. Yeah, it's like you play people playing a scorpion in Mortal yeah. Kombat. It's like, yeah, this isn't good. But it's cool, man. <laughs> the game is out for free in early access. and It's, it's pretty fun. And it's already gotten several updates. New champion. So huge props to Polyarch and Glassbreakers on their new champion with a dope name, Mojo. So just a couple, two more pieces of news, both regarding updates, and then we'll wrap this baby up. But... Pistol Whip, a game we haven't reviewed, but it's one of the most popular games on the store. It's been out for several years, still gets continuous updates. Uh, They announced just in time for Halloween. In October, they're going to have an update they're calling Elixir of Madness. They have a new trailer out for it. We watched it. You know, it's again, it's not a game we've reviewed yet, but it's one of the most popular games on the store. It's got a huge following. So if you're a Pistol Whip fan, Stay tuned for a new content update coming in October. And then last but not least, a game that we haven't reviewed yet either, but we were actually even just talking today. Like, dude, we've got to. We're both interested in it. They're, they're coming out with new updates. Battle Bows. It's a co-op wave shooter with archery, as you can tell by Battle Bows. Bows. Yeah. They announced that they have a new free content update coming, as well that the PSVR 2 version is in the works. And the new update is called a showdown mode, which 
we have yet to really play the game. Couldn't tell you what the normal shit is. No, but like I just want to say for anybody that already has it or they're looking at it, it already has new content update. And most importantly, that we'll probably be reviewing that one very soon. You know, we've been staring at the last couple of weeks, just been a little busy, but damn, it, it looks fun. I you can't know, deny it. I love the the bow and arrow games. And it's got kind of a fun aesthetic to it. Almost felt a little like resolution gamesy aesthetic wise. So <laughs> really cool stuff there. So, you know, if you're a Battle Bows fan, definitely go check out the new showdown update coming. Stay tuned for it on PSVR 2. And more importantly, stay tuned for an upcoming review from us. So other than that one, man, I'm out. I'm all out. That's all I got today. I got a little something, something. Oh, shit. It's going to be a vague something. I didn't something. expect it. A wicked vague. It's going to be kind of mysterious. You just got to, it's going to be a trust. You got, you got to bear with me, sir. <clears throat> What's this that? Is a total. So I got a phone call from a person <laughs> with a very deep voice, yeah, very which, true. which it might have well. Um, I may have seen some things involving Grimm. And I can't say what I've seen. Grim, the very hyped Rust esque game yeah, in VR. Yeah. We're so excited for it. I might have been privy to something. I'm trying to be really careful with my words. So I can't really say what it is I saw, and I can I can say less of what I even discussed. But all I can say is like if the hype train wasn't already, you know, really strong. It's even and, more. Ah, oh, dude. I would love to be able to say some shit. It's not even like, this is like 2% of even what the big picture is, but just this in itself is like, you got to be fucking kidding me. It can't come soon enough. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we say it all the time. We believe in it. It's like, I think our track record of, of games being really strong it, we've proven it after years of doing this you can look at the things that we've said should be and they are and dude i'm telling you there'll be a time where we can talk about it and I, i'll be happy to but all i can say is if you're following if you're following and waiting and hearing us talk about grim it's it, like that hype train just went up it's about to be even better yeah wow i can't freaking wait yeah dude so you see grim pre-ordering whenever that's going to be down the road We're coming out holy crap take some vacation time it's a good day for a holiday if you're out in europe I won't say vacation i'm going to start using the term holiday when i want time off from work just to see what's up um but yeah dude had my had me like goosebumps no, like you know when you get like really excited for something, but you have no outlet to like release it. Mm -hmm. So you just get like built up adrenaline and shit, and it's like you're doing that left and right. Like, what do I fucking do? That's what it felt like. I was like, oh my god! You just wish you could probably play it right now. Oh, I totally wish I could, but I've seen things. <laughs> I know things. I know things. <laughs> Good things. <laughs> Grim things. Yeah. So I'm I'm not one that's gonna like spill Spoon, the beans on Spoonfed is a beast, man. Spoonfed's a, a yeah. gangster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know there's so many lessons to be to be learned when you're you're watching someone develop their project and you know, we see it all the time and it's like sometimes it's easy to say like and we do it all the time, dude, with our selfish requests, but we always disclaimer it, we're just being selfish. But the amount of actual work and dedication it takes to pull this stuff off. Especially a multiplayer game with. Yeah, I'm just talking even just a basic game. It's like, it's no joke. You need to have a very, very structured work environment. Dedicated. Development isn't like something you can fly by the seat of your pal. I'll just do this. It's like between all the different things going on to make the game happen. And then you look at like this particular project. Jeez. I, I think people are about to, to like experience something that they never thought possible on on headsets like this. I can't we'll wait. We'll say specifically standalone. So you know stuff, you've seen stuff. Seen it, seen it. Hopefully with me. soon others I've will too. I've seen it with me own fucking eyes. Hopefully soon we all get to experience it. It was so. grim. Can't wait for grim. <laughs> so when if there's ever something I can say, I'll say it. But 
I can't. I just have to live with it. So <laughs> if you've been enjoying this episode, like I said, like I always say, subscribe, rate us five stars, join the Discord, join the Patreon, support us, love us, like us, all that stuff. Check out Tabor Radio if you're in the Ghost of Tabor. Yep. New episodes dropping the first of every month. So you do the math there. That's that going means to it be, comes out on the first. That means it comes on the on the first. That's going See, to be October first. People knock the mathematical system in America, and I just figured that We're out. We're pretty tight. We're pretty good. Got the first down. Got that Massachusetts education. So yeah, I've. I won't, I won't say nothing. We'll end on a positive <laughs> note. So, I hope I you all enjoyed this episode. You know, hopefully, we have some good Quest Connect coverage. Yeah, for you. Next week's gonna be fun. Yeah, stay tuned for an upcoming review of Survival Nation VR, an always fun VR game that took us way too long to review, but it was only a month and a half. It's only been a couple months since we've done a game review, so it's fun, man. It's not our fault. That one was. <clears throat> that one was good. Maybe Dungeons of Eternity, Hellsweeper, and Battle Bows. Maybe those one will take us a little less time. There's so many, Fuck. So many games. Fuck. <laughs> Hell of a backlog. It's only going to get bigger. So, other than that, you know, I hope you all enjoyed the episode. Hopefully, see you in the Discord. All that fun stuff. Enjoy the rest of your day and check you out later. Take so, care. Ciao, ciao.